There was a time long ago when the earth shook with the footsteps of monsters. Giants so huge, so fearsome, we can scarcely imagine them as living creatures. Not even the great T-Rex dared confront them. They were not dinosaurs. They survived. Their relatives still lie in wait at the edge of jungle rivers and at the edges of our deepest fears. They were the giant crocodiles, perhaps the greatest killers that have ever lived. This is a crocodile hunt, and few creatures strike such terror in our hearts. Their alien eyes reflect no feelings. Their smile holds no warmth. No sympathy runs through their cold blood. They are dragons from an older age. The greatest predators of a long lost world. That forgotten world is slowly coming to light and its secrets are of stunning proportions. Once there were giant crocodiles that thrived alongside the dinosaurs, and today two have become known as the greatest of their kind. Their story is an extraordinary tale of extinction and survival, a tale that reveals why, after some 200 million years, the crocodile is still smiling. Our hunt begins in an unexpected place, the high desert landscape of southern Texas. This is Big Bend National Park at the end of the 20th century. But another world once stood here, and we must ride back on the hot, dry winds of time to find it. Some 75 million years ago, Big Bend was a very different wilderness. The dinosaurs had yet to meet their cataclysmic end, and they flourished here in a lush tropical jungle rich with tidal marshes and lagoons. Rivers found their way south to the shallow sea, and groups of hadrosaurs would have stopped here for a drink, never suspecting they were risking their lives. Waiting for them in the murky waters was a monster called Dinosuchus. Its name means terrible crocodile, and it dealt in terrible death. In one awful instant, thirsty hadrosaurs were face to face with gaping jaws and a killer that used the river to cover its tracks. Now, 75 million years later, the dried out riverbed is giving up its own victims, surrendering to the wind the bones it buried so long ago. News of some extraordinary bones brings a team of paleontologists out into the desert. They have come a long way to track down a crocodile that after millions of years still knows where to hide. Leading the team is veteran crocodile expert, Professor Juan Langston of the University of Texas. He is joined by crocodile expert Art Busby and young paleontologist Chris Brochu. Heading deep into the wilderness of Big Bend, they follow the course of the ancient riverbed, leading to the most significant find of Dinosuchus fossils in 30 years. Well, it, uh, any discovery of a Dinosuchus is, uh, is exciting because they're so, they're so rare. I've been looking uh, for fossils in the Big Bend since 1938. I've perhaps seen a couple of dozen 
fragmentary pieces of Dinosuchus in that period of time. So we know they were here. We've got to keep looking for them. Every time you find a piece, perhaps it'll be a whole crocodile. The team have planned to spend a week in the field here to search for more <laughs> fossil evidence of the mighty crocodile. It's detective work that requires keen powers of observation. Only the trained eye of the expert paleontologist can pick out the bones from the bedrock. A section of jaw and a few scattered teeth, fragments of this crocodile's smile that seem intended to tease. In fact, no significant body bones of Dinosuchus have ever been found. It's likely that the ancient river claimed the body bones for itself, washing them downstream to be lost forever. So far, only broken parts of the massive skulls have been left behind. The team works with the hope of finding something new, anything that will contribute to our understanding of this amazing beast. Using modern crocodiles as a guide, they've been able to speculate about the body they have yet to find. This jawbone of Dinosuchus was excavated by Langston in Big Bend in the 1960s. From the ratio of head to body found in crocodiles today, Langston can pace out the creature's full length. 30 feet. The estimates reveal the fearsome probability that this predator measured at least 30 feet long, stood four feet high, and weighed more than 10,000 pounds. Here was a creature that could hunt on land and in water, a creature of flesh and blood, teeth and bone, as massive as an 18-wheeler. It was a time of giants, of crocodiles the size of bull elephants. And if this was the predator, what on earth was its intended victim? <laughs> Seventy-five million years ago, the moon looked down on a very different Texas. At the edge of tropical rivers and swamps, Dinosuchus, the terrible crocodile of Big Bend, looked for something to eat. It would have found hadrosaurs, 30-foot vegetarians that grazed at the water's edge. Hadrosaur bones have been found alongside those of Dinosuchus, linked forever in death. But from the time of their earliest origins, they were connected as more than just predator and prey. Over 200 million years ago, crocodiles and dinosaurs shared a common ancestry. Since then, the crocodiles have made their own way through the twists and turns of evolution. The earliest crocodile was a modest reptile about three feet in length. The generations that followed evolved into both marine animals and the semi-aquatic ancestors of today's crocodiles around the world. Along the way, they experimented with incredible forms. As well as the giant ones, there were crocodiles with hooves and even a distinct line of crocodiles with fins. They live on today, a family of survivors, predators as effective now as they were in the distant past. If they hold a secret to success, it may lie inside their smiling jaws, for all were armed with fearsome, killing teeth. The teeth of Dinosuchus were large, blunt, conical pegs. Like those of its modern relatives, they were not for chewing, but for ripping chunks out of its prey to be swallowed with a gulp. Art Busby studies the hunting techniques of modern crocodiles to gain insight into the behavior of their ancient relatives. Based on the size of this massive lower jaw of Dinosuchus and comparison with modern crocodilians like this alligator, we can look at how far it can open its jaws. I would say that Dinosuchus could open its jaws at least two or three feet, and this would have allowed it to take down small dinosaurs.
Dinosuchus had a skull that was shaped more like this modern crocodile, although of course much, much larger. Crocodiles eat by waiting at the water's edge, and then when the prey gets close, they open their mouth and lunge forward, grab the prey, roll, and pull the prey back into the water so that they can drown it. Imagine a crocodile more than twice this size, a 30-foot hadrosaur in its jaws, a clash of titans. But the contest between dinosaurs and crocodiles was soon to be over. For some mysterious reason, the dinosaurs were to die out, leaving room for the greatest crocodile the world has ever known. In one of the greatest mysteries in the history of life on Earth, the dinosaurs, the ruling reptiles, disappeared. And stranger still was the survival of their close relative, the crocodile. Whatever killed the dinosaurs did not affect them. And once the dinosaurs were gone, crocodiles became the mightiest creatures on Earth. It was here, deep in the Amazon basin, that crocodiles reached their fearful zenith. Rare fossil fragments tell of a leviathan known as Porosaurus. In 1986, having heard rumors of this river giant, paleontologist Dr. David Fraley from Johnson Community College in Kansas came to the Amazon basin on a crocodile hunt of his own. For three weeks, Fraley traveled along thousands of miles of tributaries, scanning the banks for just the right sediments. These are waters where crocodilians still abound. Alligators and caimans may lurk just beneath the peaceful surface. Fraley's expedition penetrated deep into the western headwaters of the Amazon, wild country scarcely explored even today. It wasn't until just before he was due to leave that he found what he was searching for, the fossil find of a lifetime. Now, this is a tremendous animal. Uh, it was known, you know, this uh, Purusaurus has uh, been known since 1892, and we'd, we'd find pieces of it. We'd find a fragment here, a, a tooth uh, along the way, and we knew they were around, but we uh, really didn't expect to find uh, anything like this. It's, uh, it's a little hard to imagine such a giant creature. It was a stroke of incredible luck. In a warm, wet, tropical climate, organic matter, even bone, decays rapidly. This fossil had somehow worked its way to the surface still intact. Even so, this was one croc that almost got away. It's hard to believe that you can miss a fossil that's sitting out in plain sight. And yet we walked right by it the first time, working our way as we usually do working and making our stops as we go up the river. Uh, this had not looked like a very likely sight, and we'd gone right on by it. And then coming back, we, it was sort of uh, an accident, really, to stop and check out that, that one locality. Climbing down to double check a small area of exposed riverbank, Fraley was amazed to find the upturned crocodile skull. There it was, lying out in plain view, just completely in plain view, and knew that it was something spectacular. The exposed tooth sockets could only be from an ancient meat eater. This was physical proof that Porosaurus was larger than anyone had imagined. For a moment, David Fraley felt the imposing presence of the greatest crocodile in history. When I saw the tooth socket, I knew it was Porosaurus. It's the only thing it could be. It's the only thing out here that's this big. It had to be this, this creature. When I first walked up on that, I couldn't believe it. I was uh, dumbfounded by its size and realized we had a lot of work to move this thing. That it must weigh 500 pounds. But it's, uh, it was something you really can't leave behind either, so we had to give it a try. But as we pried on it, it, uh, it began to come apart into pieces. And the largest piece took four people <laughs> to move it down to the boat. We sent it in the canoe, and the canoe went like that. And, and that's how we came down the river, with this uh, canoe with its tail out of the water. <laughs> 
30 miles downstream, the lower jaw of a Porosaurus was recovered and proved to be a perfect match. Fitted together, it made up the largest crocodile skull ever found. The complete head is five feet long, two and a half feet wide, with massive two-inch wide teeth. Based on the dimensions of this skull, Fraley estimates that Porosaurus was 50 feet long, up to nine feet wide, and could have stood five feet high when walking. It would have weighed a massive 18 tons, 10 tons more than Tyrannosaurus rex, and nearly three times more than Dinosuchus. Crocodiles continue to grow as they age, and Fraley believes there was almost no limit to how big Porosaurus could become. His benchmark is the Black Cayman, a modern Amazon alligator whose skull is dwarfed by the 10 million year old Porosaurus. Based on his analysis of the skull, he estimates 10 feet of body length for each foot of skull. This skull is five feet in length, so it's, we can estimate 50 feet for total body length of this animal. And it shows no sign of old age. It uh, has no uh, reduced numbers of teeth or not, not any sign of physical senescence you might associate with an old animal. So it could have grown longer, 60 feet, 70 feet. Eventually, it would have been too large to survive, but this one was not at its maximum size yet. In order to understand why these crocs grew to such size, Fraley has been investigating the climate and habitats of the Amazon 10 million years ago. In Porosaurus time, the world was warmer and the Amazon was not a river at all. Fraley believes that a massive lake system more than 2,000 miles wide covered almost the whole of Peru and western Brazil. And like the Amazon of today, it was a great theater of evolution. In warm, stable climates, animals do not face wide swings in living conditions, so they can specialize into a huge variety of species. In numerous swampy lagoons and brackish ponds, crocodiles, even giant ones, could easily lie hidden, waiting to ambush water turtles and slow-moving catfish. They may even have preyed on large mammals that came to drink in their waters, attacking with stealth and lightning speed. This was crocodile paradise. No other predator in this watery wilderness could compete with them. But something drove the Porosaurus to grow so huge, so fierce, so competitive. And the only rival it could have had was another Porosaurus. Not only does an animal have to compete with other species for its place in nature, it also has to compete with members of its own species. They want exactly the same food, the same territory, the same nesting size. Every requirement is the same. And in that sort of competition amongst the members of one species, giant size is a definite advantage. When you look at Purosaurus, the large size of that animal, the competition must have been extremely fierce. Purosaurus' greatest enemies were others of its own kind. It was relentless competition with each other that pushed them to the limits of their physical potential. But enormous size conferred short-lived success and ultimately sowed the seeds of their downfall. The world was changing. Time was running out for the giants of the Amazon. By becoming such a giant, the Porosaurus of the Amazon had in its own way become an extremist. Throughout their long history, crocodiles had always been masters of multiple worlds, moving freely between land and water, eating just about anything they cared to catch. 
But a giant can't afford such flexibility. An extreme creature living at the edge of its limits is in dire trouble if it must face sudden and severe change. Dr. Fraley believes that large size is an adaptive strategy. Being big gives you the advantage over your own species. But eventually, even the largest individuals bump up against other factors. The problem with specialization is that these species are most closely tied to the environment. And if the environment changes, they're the first to become extinct. Something upset the stable world of the Porosaurus, and the climate began to change. Seas retreated, locked away in new polar ice caps. And out of a vast lake, the Amazon River itself was born. David Fraley believes the extinction of Porosaurus was linked to such a dramatic change in the environment. These extreme crocodiles, it seems, were not able to adapt to the dawning of a new world. Although we have this fantastic skull, there's still a great deal about Prosaurus and its world that we don't know. Out there, someplace, is the answer. The answers will wait as long as the jungle still holds their bones and their secrets. It is said that nothing lives forever. The two greatest crocodiles in history, the fearsome Dinosuchus and the great Porosaurus, have long since met their fate. But crocodiles are with us still, living proof of the durability of their design. Masters of the special world where land and water meet, the crocodiles are a family of survivors. Rising with the dinosaurs some 200 million years ago, it's the crocodiles that have stood the test of time. Their modern descendants give us a tantalizing glimpse of the awesome power of a natural-born killer.